Good evening and welcome to the Man's Corner. Uh, today's guest is Guy Glotus, who is the Worcester County Sheriff and more importantly for today, a candidate for state auditor. Guy, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It seems like you've been in Methuen a lot lately, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, let's first say, um, if anything goes wrong today, we can blame uh, Jamie Atkinson, <laughs> who is directing for the first time, I believe, and if there are glitches, <laughs> test patterns come across the screen, it's Jamie Atkinson's fault. <laughs> Guy, um, welcome to Methuen, and obviously uh, we're coming up on a primary but l let's talk a little bit so that the viewers, uh, the few that have not met you in Methuen, <laughs> can uh, have an understanding of uh, where you came from, what Guy Glotus is all about. You have a, a long political history, um, and as a political guy, you're, you're a guy that wins elections. But how, how did you get started in this business? Well, you know, I grew up in the east side of Worcester, which is very similar to Methuen. I, you know, when I'm here, it's almost like a home away from home farming. You even though I've spent an astronomical amount of time here, I was just joking with Jamie on the way in about, He's saying, you again? Yeah. Do you live here? And uh, But, you know, I grew up in the east side of Worcester, a very working class neighborhood. Uh, my dad was a school teacher. Um, I pay, actually joined the labor's union at 18 years of age. I was a little bit thinner than I am yeah. now, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> and I paid my way through college uh, through the labor's union. I went to UMass Amherst. And, you know, I worked some jobs uh, out of college, uh, worked uh, on a beer truck and did some more laboring. Uh, then I went to work for the Mass Trial Court. But then I had an opportunity to run for state rep in my 20s, like you. Yeah. I got an early start, and uh, I was a huge underdog, and I won that seat. And then uh, two years later, a state senate seat opened up, and... Um, uh, again, it was a very difficult race because I'm a Democrat, you know, the working class, Methuen type of Democrat, but it was a Republican held seat uh, for many, many a years. Maddie Amarello had held it. Yeah. Peter Blute lived in the district. To this day, four out of five of the state reps were Republican. So it was a very difficult race. And I, I ended up not only winning the nomination, but then I took on Karen Polito, who's now a candidate for state treasurer. Yes. So it was a very complicated and very tough race. And I was able to become uh, the youngest member of the state Senate. I got elected in my 20s. And I held that dubious distinction until your senator, Steve Vidor, got elected. And I think he's about six months younger younger than I am, so uh, he uh he won that uh, dubious distinction. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, uh, uh, and how long were you in the state senate for? I was in the state senate for six years. Six years. Now, is, there, there is a, a rumor, and I think the Methuen uh, viewers would like to hear this. Is it true uh, that Jim Jajuga hero worships you? Or is that, <laughs> is that not true? I, because a lot of people say he has pitches in his home and yeah, everything. I, do you serve with Nobody Jim. Nobody can worship Jim. Uh, he couldn't worship anybody more than he worships himself. There you <laughs> so believe me, I couldn't, I couldn't even be in the top ten categories. But, I, you know, I've had a, a long history of working closely with many of uh, your state senators. Jim Jajuga was a good friend, and obviously Steve Bedore. I'm yeah. very fortunate to have his endorsement. He was, I think, the first state senator in the state to endorse my candidacy for auditor, and I worked very closely with him, Linda Dean Campbell, yes. Barbara LaTalia, and I also wanted to thank Methuen voters. We did very well at the Democratic Convention. We won the Merrimack Valley overwhelmingly, and it's just, it's been great meeting so many people on the campaign trail as auditor, and, and now it's almost like a personal relationship. You know people by their first name, yeah. and, you know, it's a very comfortable part of the state, and what I know and what I get frustrated with is the lack of statewide candidates that come up here. I mean, it's such a big population. I was talking to Jamie about it the other day on his radio uh, show, that they just don't get a lot, and I don't understand it, because if you look right through Lowell, Lawrence, right through Essex County and Merrimack Valley. I really think that controls the statewide races. So I'm intrigued by it myself. And um, all kidding aside, you've been here so often that, that it's astounding to me. You're a statewide candidate that gets that. But maybe we can dovetail in, into the uh, one of the reasons maybe that at least Democratic candidates aren't up here that much. You, you understand, you said it yourself, that uh, coming from your home district, this area uh, votes Democratic, but they have a conservative bent. Yeah. And let's face it, I, I don't think that you, you would find the Merrimack Valley, and Methuen in particular, uh, to be a liberal bastion. Um, again, we vote lunch bucket Democrats, yeah. 
And I mean, what, what do you think about that? Do you I think fit it's that great. category? No, I, I, you know, I think it's great. And I think the Democratic Party has to get back to its roots. It's got to get back to talking about jobs and economic development, public safety, education, upward mobility. You know, these are the issues, the foundation that made the party the majority party and the successful party. And I do think for a while the party veered so far to the left that it created, as you know, and the political scientists refer to as the Reagan Democrats, where they became very disenchanted. I mean, there's a reason why Republicans have done so well in Massachusetts, even though Democrats outnumber them uh, two to one, in some places three to one. It's because of the Reagan Democrats, the unenrolled, the disenchanted working class Democrats. And, you know, I think what Democrats should be speaking about solely is the economy. Everything hinges on jobs. Jobs create revenue. Revenue creates public safety. Revenue creates education. It all focuses on jobs. And right now, I think that's going to be the key. Even in a race like state auditor, I think that's one of the key uh, speaking points in, in agendas for this election coming up. Boy, I know we're going to talk about the auditor's job, but let's just stay in that for, for one more second because, you know, uh, nationally, people are talking about the Democrats uh, taking a bath in the midterms. Uh, and it, it appears to me that everything else is a sideshow except for jobs and that the focus needs to be on jobs because even in your race, I, I think that uh, with real unemployment about 15%, what other issue is there? You know, one thing I'd love to do, Mayor, if elected, is do a cost analysis on how expensive it is for Massachusetts to hire out-of-state employees. We had a construction project in Worcester last year, uh, renovation, $10 million. Every single construction job went out of state. Went to Rhode Island, Connecticut, as far away as the Midwest. That has a tangible cost on Massachusetts. It's unemployment, it's lost revenue, it's unemployment insurance. It's a huge cost, and I think the auditor can really educate people not only about creating jobs, but retaining jobs. It's not just limited to, to, to Worcester. I mean, I was on Springfield. They're laying fi fiber optics for the federal stimulus money. Guess where all those workers were from? New York. Yeah. You know, they're talking about the Cape Wind Project down the Cape. Where do you think they want to produce these? In, in, in Rhode Island. They should be making them... And the labor should be coming from New Bedford and Fall River. And, you know, it, you know the Globe, uh, and, and I don't always agree with the Globe, as I, you know. Yes. Uh, but the Globe did a great article a, a couple weeks ago about how $45 million earmarked in federal stimulus money never made it to Massachusetts. It went as far away as, as Florida. And that's germane to the auspices of the auditor's office. That's something the auditor should be tracking and advocating and talking about. We're the only auditor's office in the nation that doesn't post on the internet or the web federal stimulus money and even state distribution. Right. So these are all things where we, we talk about jobs where it's, it's, it, it's relevant to every position, state treasurer, state auditor, governor, the state legislature. And I think that's going to be the key to getting ourselves out of this economic gloom and doom that we're in. And let, let me go take that one step further. Uh, no disrespect intended to anybody, but I think that, um, you know, all the folks have a way of doing things their way and they get set in their ways. But the auditor's office, quite honestly, has been a sleepy office, maybe uh, efficiently run. But um, what about modernizing the auditor's office? You just talked about yeah. a couple of things that really piqued my interest. <laughs> but you know, it has been, and, and I agree with you, no disrespect to anybody, and I certainly uh, commend the, the, the current auditor. 24 years of service is great. Uh, but I'd run it much differently. I mean, I wouldn't run it the status quo. That office has to be proactive. If you look at some states like Pennsylvania, it's the marquee constitutional office auditor. And it should be weighing in, not just on jobs and economic development, but talking to U.S. city councilors when I come up to Methuen, they're talking about these unfunded state mandates. I've talked to you about it, how they're financially crippling local cities and towns. There's a division of unfunded mandates within the auditor's office that can be proactive in challenging some of these mandates and therefore saving cities and towns money uh, and just reinventing government. I mean, I'd love to come up with a plan. I talked about rental agency fees. I talked about it with Jamie on the radio last yeah. week about we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, taxpayer money, renting out state buildings. I mean, uh, uh, renting out state agencies and at the same time, we have 300 state buildings that aren't being used. For instance, the Mass Trial Court has a plush office space at Two Centa Plaza looking out over Boston Harbor. Four and a half million dollars a year to rent it. But we have all this state property that's not being used. We have an abandoned courthouse in Central Mass. 
it just doesn't make sense. So there's ways the auditor can be not just the fiscal watchdog, but providing policy and initiatives and, and creating debate about where we can be saving taxpayer money and cutting waste and mismanagement. So that's my vision is make it much more active than it has been because you're right, it's, it's, it's a very dormant position right now. Yeah, and it has been dormant and I know that you have some great ideas. On the other side of this break, um, you know me, we're going to have to talk a little bit more about those unfunded mandates because <laughs> May is a very hot on that. But I want to talk about the auditor's office, about your record as a rep, as a senator. Uh, and what you hope to bring uh, to the table uh, after you win the primary. Right. So um, hang in with us. Uh, we will be right back after this break.